Hey, this is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach, and I'm going to go over a case review with you. I think you might find this interesting. This is a client of mine that came in a couple of years ago that we're able to help quite a bit. Not going to go over her name, obviously, or any personal information, but I will talk about what she was experiencing, and then we're going to look at her lab findings. A lot of people have asked me to do this, and I think it'll be really interesting for you to see what we look at when we actually order functional labs for our new clients and what we're finding and how that correlates to what's driving their blood sugar, their high blood sugar, type 2 diabetes, metabolic dysfunction. So this particular client, we'll call her Amy, was a 67-year-old female. She was five feet tall and weighed 170 pounds when she started. So she had a BMI of 33.2, which is considered in the obesity range. And when we we did our workup when we asked her to share some of the things that she wanted, some of the changes she was hoping to achieve by working with me. Weight was not really at the top of her list. In fact, she said she'd like to lose maybe about 10 pounds. For her, it was more about controlling blood sugar without medication. She had had a really rough road with medications. First, she was put on metformin and it caused really uncomfortable diarrhea and GI distress. Her doctor discounted continued metformin and put her on pioglitazone, which is also called Actos. And she said that she had a rapid weight gain of about 20 pounds that scared her to death. So her doctor then discontinued pioglitazone and put her on Jardians. Jardians made her really sick, lightheaded. She said she was having a hard time functioning. So she eventually took herself off that. And unfortunately, was searching for a new doctor. She did eventually find a new prescribing physician who was able to help her and we worked with her as well to help her get on the right track and get her blood sugar under control. But when she started, her blood sugar was really high. Her goals were to get her blood glucose levels down or anyone see down without medication or at least maybe trying to find a medication that worked without making her nauseous or gain a bunch of weight. And then her other major goal was just to be active and healthy and feel good. You know, she just wanted to feel good again and to avoid major complications and problems from high blood sugar and diabetes, things like heart disease, heart attack and stroke, kidney problems, eye problems, circulation issues, dementia, and all the other things that have been linked to high blood sugar and diabetes. So we did a detailed lab workup on her. Let's take a look at her labs now. All right, so here's her lab report and you're gonna notice we do things a lot differently than standard conventional medical physicians when it comes to ordering labs. Of course, we do the basics, but we go well beyond that. So I'm gonna explain what all of these mean. And we'll start right at the top of the basics. Fasting glucose or blood sugar should be right around around 80 to 85. So at 158, this is almost twice normal. That's a lot of extra sugar floating around in the bloodstream at all times. Fasting blood sugar is largely controlled by the liver and the liver should keep your blood sugar, your baseline or fasting blood sugar in a pretty tight range. Hemoglobin A1C here is a percentage and that should be right around five to five and a half percent. Anything over 5.6% is considered elevated. So she's all the way up here at a 7.1. That's pretty high. In fact, that A1C 7.1 is equivalent to an estimated average blood sugar of about 156. So right about where fasting is, which means that this goes up much higher at other times, probably after meals. So a few other things we saw. Uric acid is a really important metabolic health marker. High uric acid can start to crystallize in joints and lead to gout, which is a painful condition in the joints. She didn't have that yet, but with a uric acid of 7.3, that's probably on its way. The next thing here is the GFR, which is a kidney indicator. That should really be above 90. When we see a GFR under 90 like this, it tells us that the kidneys are starting to become impacted by the high blood sugar and insulin resistance. When this gets under 60, it's considered phase 3A of 
chronic kidney disease. So we want to make sure this doesn't get anywhere near the 60 mark and actually gets well above 90. Normal GFR is like 100 plus in most people. All right, and next thing I wanna look at with you is the liver enzyme. So there's three different liver enzymes here on this test, AST, ALT, and GGT. These should all be below 20 or 2-0. AST is 17. ALT, which is the most specific to the liver, is 23. And then GGT is 32. So these two are definitely elevated. That happens when there's some damage to liver cells and some oxidative stress. It's a sign that there's probably insulin resistance in the liver and some fat accumulation in the liver. We'll look for some other signs of that as we go through the labs. All right, next thing I want to show you here is this inflammation marker here, CRP, C-reactive protein. That is a sign of chronic systemic inflammation. It's what's known as an acute phase reactant made and released by the liver. It's part of the inflammation cascade. This should be below 1% and optimal is really less than 0.5. So she's at a 5.96, almost a six. That's six times normal. That indicates a lot of inflammation. That inflammation can drive cardiovascular disease and it can certainly contribute to or cause insulin resistance. And then a little bit lower here on the same page, we see the hormone insulin. Now, a lot of people think that they have had their insulin levels tested, but unless you see this insulin on your lab report, you probably didn't have it tested. Insulin is a measurement of the actual hormone made and released by the pancreas that controls and regulates your blood sugar. Normal Fasting insulin should be right around five. So when you're not eating, your insulin should be right around five. If it's under like two and a half, three, that might be low insulin. If it's over six or seven in that range, that's elevated. And hers came in at 30, which is really high. So this is a very, very high fasting insulin. This is a sign that she is severely insulin resistant. Now there's a calculation that research scientists use to measure or quantify insulin resistance. It's called the HOMA IR score, and you get it based on the insulin and glucose. So her HOMA IR score, when we calculated, came in at 11.7. A normal HOMA IR is 1.0, so 11 and a half times more insulin resistant than she should be, or 11 and a half times less insulin sensitive than she would need to be to have normal blood sugar really high. Now, here's something really interesting about this particular client. Her lipids actually looked really good. So her LDL cholesterol here came in at 78. And I always tell my clients, I'm not as concerned about this as I am this LDL particle number. This should be less than 1,000 per liter. And hers came in at 742, so actually really good. But when we scroll down a little bit lower and look at this, this is called an NMR lipoprotein profile. We see that the quality of her lipids, the quality of her lipoproteins is really poor. This particular lab does a score, it's called a lipoprotein insulin resistance score, and it's based on these six parameters right here, the size and number of these lipoprotein particles. Ideal, optimal is 25 or less, and she came in here at 63, which is a really high LPIR score. This is lipoprotein insulin resistance. So this indicates some fat in the liver and liver insulin resistance. So even though the LDL cholesterol looks okay and the LDL particle number looks fine, this shows that her liver is clearly insulin resistant and has some fat in it. Even here, the ApoB, which you hear a lot about, people talk about it, testing ApoB as more accurate than the LDL cholesterol. The ApoB here looks great. So unless you do that lipoprotein profile, you would never know that there's a major lipid problem here related to insulin resistance 
and metabolic dysfunction. All right, I wanna go over one more thing with you, and that is the fat cell hormones or adipokines. Oftentimes, insulin resistance actually starts in our fat cells, but very few doctors ever measure the health of the fat cells. So we test these hormones, they're called adipokines. The two main adipokines are adiponectin and leptin. When we're fasting, our leptin level should be nice and low, below 10, and optimally, ideally around five. Her fasting leptin, as you can see here, came in at 38.2. So this is really high. This means that the fat cells are overfilled and swollen, screaming for attention. They're inflamed. In fact, that's probably one of the things driving up that C-reactive protein number that we looked at earlier. And these fat cells are highly insulin resistant. When fat cells get enlarged and swollen, what's called hypertrophic, they become leaky and they leak free fatty acids, which go right into the liver and make the liver insulin resistant. And that's what drives up our fasting blood sugar. So this is a major red flag. The other adipokine that we test for is right here. It's called adiponectin. And this one should be over 10 fasting and should be twice leptin or at least greater than leptin. So if our leptin is like eight, our adiponectin adiponectin should be around 16 or so. We want to see the adiponectin between 10 and 20 and the leptin around 5 to 10. So her, as you can see here, her adiponectin is suppressed all the way down to 2, which tells us that her fat cells are highly insulin resistant and inflamed. So even though we saw some issues with the liver, with the elevated lipoproteins, this is the key problem with her. So what we ended up doing with this client is really working on helping her to heal the fat cells, to change and improve her body composition. Yes, she had to lose some weight. In fact, burn quite a bit of fat around her midsection, but that was the key driver. So by doing that, that's what brings the fasting blood sugar back down, the A1C down, addresses that underlying root cause so this doesn't continue to progress. So by finding and addressing the root cause factors, you can normalize blood sugar levels and improve metabolic health and metabolic flexibility. All right, I hope you found that helpful. If you wanna have labs like this done, maybe you're struggling with your own blood sugar or weight or have some metabolic imbalances, check out the link in the description for this video. Click on that and it'll tell you everything you need to know. All right, this is Dr. Brian Mole, the Diabetes Coach, and I'll see you back soon.